Today we're going to be working on a 1996 Nissan D21 pickup truck. It's called the uh, Nissan Hard Body. This particular truck has a 2.4 liter four cylinder and an automatic transmission. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace this radiator. Now because this truck has an automatic transmission we'll have to disconnect some radiator hoses and some transmission cooler lines. So let's get this project started. It's very easy and you can definitely do it yourself. First step that we're going to do is we're going to remove this intake tube so that we have access to everything down there. Right, that's two 10 millimeter bolts right there. Alright, we removed the intake, we sat it off to the side, I put the bolts back into the little holes that they came out of so I know which bolts went where. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the drain cock on the bottom of this radiator and let any of the remaining coolant out into a catch pan that I have below. <clears throat> the drain is located over here on the driver's side and it's a, like a black plastic finger that you can. I've got the drain opened on the bottom of the radiator. It's now running into the pan. The next thing that I'm going to do is disconnect this hose and this hose and the bottom hose. All right, I'm going to tuck that one out of the way. This is the problem with the radiator. The neck is broken off. So that's where all the coolant was leaking out of. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hose off just to make sure that no plastic got stuck down in there. Okay, there was no plastic in that hose, so it was all stuck right here, so that's a good thing. Next, we need to remove four Phillips head screws that hold this shroud on. Alright, there's two on the top and two on the bottom. Alright, that allows us to slide this shroud back, which will give us the clearance we need to pull this radiator out. Now that I've got the hoses loose and off, I'm going to take these 10 millimeter bolts out, which will remove the part of the radiator. With those out of the way, radiator can move freely. So let's go ahead and remove these rubber grommets. Do that by getting this rubber piece out, or metal piece out rather, and then sliding the rubber out. Alright, this is the point where you can lift this radiator out if you have a manual transmission truck and put the new radiator in. But because this truck has an automatic transmission, it has two lines going back which need to be taken off of the bottom of the radiator. Now, I can't get to the hose clamps on the bottom of those because they're facing down. So that's gonna require me to get up under the truck. Okay, we're up under the truck now. And because this is an automatic, we have to get to those uh, lines that go to the transmission to the bottom of the radiator. And to facilitate that, I'm gonna have to take off this plastic cover. Okay, I can see both of the lines right here, right where they go on. All right, I want to mention this. When you take those hoses off the transmission cooler, you want to make sure that you turn the hoses up or put a pair of vice grips or something, hose clamp on them or something, 
to keep them from leaking any fluid while you're changing the radiator. All right, we've got our hoses disconnected from the transmission. Now we've got our fan shroud slid back. We should be able to lift this radiator out. There we go. You see these little rubber pieces? They go in little holes at the bottom and that's what the radiator sticks into. You want to make sure when you pull your old radiator out that you check the bottom of it and that none of these are left on it. You want to make these back in the hole here. So when you put your new radi radiator in, it'll be held nice and steady. Looks the same. We might replace that cap too. Just as a safety precaution, but you can see where the old one was bad. This thing right here was cracked off. See, it's supposed to be that long. This one's missing. So that's the uh, that's the problem with this one. It didn't have any leak other than that. So I'm gonna make sure this is tight. That way, when I start dumping fluid in, it won't run back out. Then I'm gonna be real careful sticking her down in there. So let's take our little rubber pieces. Push them back down into the top. Then this piece of metal goes in from the front, from the front side because the bolt goes in from the back. We're gonna go back under and we're gonna hook up our bottom radiator hose and both of our transmission lines. Now I don't know if you can see it or not, it's kinda hard to follow, but it's pretty straightforward. You just push them back on where they came off and then you slide the clamps back on. the hoses on the bottom hooked up and the next step is to make sure that the radiator goes down into the little slots where the rubber is there she goes now she feels all sturdy in there that's what you want all right let's go ahead and put these back on what we're going to do we're going to just hand start all the bolts tighten any of them down until they're all started and that way we know it's all going to fit together next we're going to put the shroud back on I will say you want to do these by hand and the reason that is, is because this is going into plastic. You don't want to tighten it with an impact or something like that and have it break. So just get them snugged up to where they're not going to come out and this part ain't moving. And that should be good enough. Right. Tight. 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 Alright, next step. Top radiator hose. This is where our problem was before. Alright. Now we put our overflow hose back in the clips. Coolant, I'm using Prestone ready mixed or it's you know pre-mixed so it's 50-50 already so I don't have to worry about water. Alright, let's put our intake hose back on here. For that to drop down so that we know that the thermostat's open and we could dump the rest of our coolant in. 
last step in my process, I'm gonna put this shield back up. All right, that's the whole deal right there. You just saw me change this radiator in the Nissan. It was no problem at all, and it's definitely a DIY type of project, so you can do it yourself, believe me. I wanna say thank you very much for watching the video if you're still watching right now, and please give it a thumbs up if it was any good. Leave me a comment. Let me know what I could have done better or what you'd like to see. It'll help my channel grow. All right, until next time, Greg Festo out.